Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Welcome back to another brand new episode of Game Chat with Tom and Lucas. We're here today with, uh, of course, myself, your boy Tom, and then, you know, down the corner over there is our wonderful always cheese and co-host uh lucas we also have my brother uh trevor hubbard with us tonight say what up trevor how's it going good to have you here and then up next to me we have uh a good friend uh beachy what's up my friend what's up ian how we doing why don't you why don't you tell the the people while you're here give us a little rundown yeah so um some friendly uh, banter amongst those here in the uh, what do you mean productions group chat last week in regards to the uh, men's national hockey tournament. Um, As I'm understanding, there is a UMass fan here in the podcast. So there was some smack talking going on and me being as involved in the hockey world as I have been kind of came right out and said that uh, UMass was not going to not only not make the frozen four, but they weren't going to get out of their, first round game against the (laughs) university of Minnesota. And uh, wouldn't you know it, despite being down two, nothing and three to one in this hockey game, the Gophers prevailed with a four, three overtime victory and knocked said UMass Minutemen said defending national champion UMass Minutemen out of the national tournament. And uh, you know, I came out on the, uh, on the right side of this, uh, a little humble brag here. And so, you know, getting a few minutes of FaceTime here on the, on the program. So appreciate you boys having <laughs> me on here. Of course, sir. Of course, sir. You know, it, it was a well-fought, well-fought victory by the the Gophers. It's, it's a funny situation for me in, in my home as both me and my fiance are both UMass alum as are the co-hosts and the guests of today's episode. All of us are UMass alum. In fact, you just hate to see it when the home team wins, but my fiance is currently going to the University of Minnesota. So she was also like slightly jazzed about it. And I and I felt betrayed. But you know, it's like it's okay. They it was a well fought victory. The game was very chippy, very fast paced, especially that first period. They were like coming out the gun hot and ready to yeah. fight. Uh so you know, all's fair, all's fair in uh love and hockey as they say. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I'm not going to complain because I do actually have the Gophers winning it all this year. Uh, they've been one of the better teams in the, uh, in the hockey college hockey world this year. So I, I felt confident that, uh, they weren't going to destroy my bracket on night on night. Number one, luckily for me, I, you know, I had to sweat out that overtime period and it, it came up on the, on the positive side for me. So, you know, go Gophers! I'll be rooting for them big time, uh, on, next Thursday at the, at the garden in Boston. So looking forward to seeing some uh, great college hockey action. Beachy. Uh, I understand you, as you mentioned, this banter went down in the, what do you mean? Productions group chat. That means our friend here, of course, has his own podcast. Why don't you, t- why don't you tell the folks out here uh, a little bit of what you, about what you're doing? Yeah. So I do work uh, on my own show, uh, it's called Between the Hash Marks, an inside look at Hockey East, um, posting weekly updates, not so much over the last couple of weeks with everything kind of going on. I'm letting the final picture of the college hockey world kind of settle itself out and break down. Uh, we, I am going to put out an episode uh, coming up in the coming days here with a breakdown of the Frozen Fours. It's being hosted by Hockey East, uh, the league as a whole, um, again, at TD Garden, so I'll be breaking down everything that's gone on, break down the final notes and numbers for hockey teams and where they finished uh, this season. Also take a look at some of the transfer uh, transfer portal uh, members as the guys are looking to leave their current schools and head elsewhere for potential better playing opportunities and things like that. Uh, but you can find the show on Twitter at between uh, that's B T W E E N hashes pod. Uh, you can also find my personal Twitter handle at Ian bow I A N B E A U. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I do here under the, uh, what do you mean productions umbrella? Go check them out folks. It's, it's some great content over there. You know, we, we here at what do you mean productions only put out the best content, of course. So if you like this podcast, you'll certainly like the wide array of podcasts that we provide Uh, shout out to bill 
our Absolutely. showrunner, producer, and uh, CEO, if you will. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on here, man. Yeah, uh, just one hot take here in the gaming sense to kind of get you guys kicking and going. Um, of course. What do you got? I, I wanted to bring a, a little bit of a hot take. Uh, I don't know how much you guys discuss gaming soundtracks, uh, and things like that, but uh, I'm going to go on the record here and state that NHL 14 has the best in-game soundtrack. Uh, the Dropkick Murphys, obviously, Boston-based band is in that one. Uh, then you got other bands like Wolf Mother, uh, Soundgarden, um, Bullet for My Valentine is in there as well, Black Veil Brides, uh, and then of course Zombie Nation. So I'm a big big fan of the NHL 14 soundtrack. So that's my hot take. Appreciate you boys letting me come on for my uh, little bit of a victory lap. And uh, on that note, enjoy the rest of the pod. And uh, more importantly, go Gophers. Peace out. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, with that hot take, why don't we just dive right in, guys? Lucas, how you been doing, man? What you been seeing in the news? What you been playing? I thought I had my microphone issues fixed, but <laughs> I was uh, I was played. So we'll, we'll see if maybe next time we can get that done. But you'll be able to figure it out. I have confidence. I had it work in my audio test this afternoon, but the... Uh, the technical gods have frowned upon me this evening. So, but next time we'll, we'll see. But aside from that, uh, not too much going on. I have not gamed this week yet due to work and, uh, you know, staying a little later than usual, but you bet your, uh, you bet your ass as soon as this podcast is done and recorded, <laughs> I'm going to jump back into the lands between. <laughs> of course. Of course, I can't blame you. It's How a about you, Tom? Oh. What about the uh, the lands of Fortnite, Fortnite. Battle Royale? Fortnite! <laughs> I've been dabbling with Fortnite. I played some with Trevor the other day. It was a good time. That no battle, that no battle, oh, no so build happy. mode. <laughs> that no build mode is sweet. You gotta, I know you downloaded that ish, Lucas. I've I did not playing- download that. You said you did. I started the download, but then all those internet issues. I was like, yeah, I should probably like shut this off. You know, you you just had. <laughs> you... I got up to like twenty seven percent. Hey, all right. That's... So I can resume said download. I mean, we you can should... play a quarter of a game of Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Then you just die. Yeah. Yeah. Fortnite no build mode is pretty fun, huh, Trev? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I feel like. I hadn't played Fortnite in a, a fat minute. Jumping back into it and not needing to worry that I couldn't build like a sweaty Fortnite player um, <laughs> was pretty good. I couldn't agree anymore. Oh my God. Yeah. You you see anything in the news? Aside from the fact that the no build mode in Fortnite is uh, going to be here to stay. It's going to be a permanent addition to the game, which like is pretty cool because it does just throw Fortnite back into the rotation. Screw screw Warzone, screw Apex, back to the Fortnite. I definitely think it's interesting because it is like stripping a part of like the identity of that game. And I wonder whether or not like the no build mode will become more popular. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I haven't played Fortnite in like years until they've added it back. So I'm glad that it's staying. I, I was in the same boat. I think it was like summer 2018 when i had last played and that was like the heavy fortnite summer yeah lucas you gotta dabble more my friend speaking of you know other news um aside from the fact that breath of the wild 2 was delayed this week to spring of 2023 i believe they said which i don't remember but I may or may not have predicted that we'll have to, we're going to Lucas, we got to watch all these back at some point and like keep track of our predictions and like keep score. But uh, I feel like I called that, but that's pretty, that's pretty predictable. You know, I'm okay with seeing that. It's never a bad thing when a game is delayed. It just gives them more time to flesh out something that could be a masterpiece, but uh one place that games will not be uh, revealed or have the potential to be delayed later on is uh, E3 this year. Did you guys see that? E3 is officially not happening this year. 
they're done. And yep. in more important news, Jeff Keeley took the fattest check to the bank and is probably having the best day of his life because no E3. What does that mean? Where are all the game companies going to go? They're going to go straight into Jeff Keeley's open, open arms with his jeans and his sneakers at the game awards in the summer games fling. I was the summer games fest. Like, uh, I, I totally like missed it. Um, is it like a, a sequence of conferences or were they just announcing things? Um, I feel like they had like, I don't know, Lucas, I remember watching some of it with you. I believe it was like a series of conferences. Okay. Like they had different ones. There may have been a, a Nintendo Direct. I feel like there was like an EA and a Ubisoft one. Yeah, Summer Games Fest was where I think we first saw the trailer for uh, Avatar, that Avatar game. Um, amongst amongst many other things also that project or that planet of lima oh my god that game's gonna kill me uh it looks really good i cannot remember the name of it it's like planet planet something pretty standard for jeff Keeley, i guess uh he's doing more and more of those world premiere type conference things where he's just rounding up all the games companies and like housing them under his own thing which you know all respect to him. If he wants to be like the king of game announcements, let him have it, I say. He doesn't want to be the Doritos Pope anymore. The what? <laughs> look up, look up Jeff Keeley, Doritos Pope. What? That is like before the game awards, or, or I guess during the game awards when they were on like Spike. <laughs> oh God, dude, I um, what the like I he did, he got into a lot of like promotional work and like he's holding had... Mountain Dew. Yeah, <laughs> he was uh for the for the audio listeners, uh, he, it's just Jeff Keeley like sitting a bunch uh, around a bunch of Doritos and and Mountain Dew. He's literally wearing like papal robes and a giant <laughs> Dorito is the big giant Pope hat. Jeff Keeley uh, has definitely come a long way. <laughs> I had no idea about that. That's like the best thing I've ever heard. Holy and the, the article title on this picture too is hilarious. It says Doritos wanted Jeff Keeley to host the game awards as Dorito Pope. <laughs> that's that's a bit much to ask for. <laughs> I think he could come out for a little segment, like as just the, for oh, one yeah. award. He's like but for the whole time. Doritos. <laughs> new flavor world premiere the entire game awards just takes place as a as like an elaborate version of mass and like each world premiere is like a bible verse <laughs> it's 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 the dorito pope jeff keely <laughs> reading the gamer bible <laughs> And not that the whole award show isn't just ads anyways, but they just slip in tons of Doritos ads. They do like Super Bowl, like they do like elaborate like ad campaigns with the whole thing. Uh, well, you know, like and subscribe to Game Chat with uh, Tom Lucas on Instagram and YouTube if you support our idea of the Game Awards hosted by Dorito Pope Jeff Keighley. Um, I think that would be a hit. I think that would be much more entertaining than what they already got. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. I'll I'll cry if there's like any reference to that. Lucas, you see anything else? You wanna you wanna lead in uh, what we're gonna be talking about today? I uh, I can get us started, I suppose, with the main topic. Wait, wait, uh, hold up, hold up, hold oh. up. Oh, okay. Oh, you guys. I have I have one news story. Yeah, drop it, drop it. Um, I'm not into esports, so I don't really know them that well. But Phase Clan has <laughs> a new comic out with Batman. <laughs> it is a Phase Clan X Batman collab. Um, and I wanted to throw a special <laughs> shout out because even though I don't know much about esports and FaZe Clan, I know one of the early members of FaZe Clan, FaZe Temper, is from our hometown. He's, he went, he was in senior year when I was in freshman year. He went to Hero High. Yep. I think he created it. He was one of the founders, yeah. Him and like a couple other people. 
so the the other guy who is like big on youtube is uh from lol like oh, okay. so pretty pretty close by i think he's he's banks batman slash phase clan matching the phase pros to dc's greatest heroes so yeah um <laughs> it says phase up I saw some screenshots of it on Twitter like earlier today, and it was uh, pretty funny. So shout out FaZe Clan. Uh, good for you for getting your Batman collab. I know it's something that everyone wants, um, but few get. This is crazy. What kind of world do we live in? Lucas, we got to get you into FaZe Clan. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> comic this comic is ridiculous lucas can't believe this yeah i was looking at some screenshots of that comic it's pretty fucking funny did you see the one with scarecrow yeah i just it's batman in the fucking phase house <laughs> like yeah. you know like... and th- there's there's one screenshot where it's like <gasps> one guy batman's, just like batman's a dinosaur you can't like do anything right now this is a pre- an issue for gamers um unrelated to batman uh special shout out it is the second anniversary of the launch of persona 5 royale um on the day of recording i saw that on twitter as well and i wrote it down that's pretty I wanted cool to shout it out because i'm playing the first one or um, persona 5 not not the first persona but is that is royale is just a bunch more like content right yeah yeah yeah, I hear that game's like multiple hundreds of hours. I'm I'm currently like 110 into Persona 5. Holy good gajoli. It's it's a good ass. It's a good ass time. I feel like at the rate I'm playing Elden Ring, I'm like 100% going to like sink more and more hours. I'm already at like 30 plus for nice. sure. And I still like haven't even done the first like story boss like Mm -hmm. at this point i'm gonna one shot the thing like i'm level 40 Mm -hmm. no (laughs) i'm level 40 bro (laughs) no tom yeah i'm gonna do my sheep we'll have to you when you whenever you get around to that we gotta like i don't don't know if we should live stream it but we have to record it at the very least (laughs) i just i need to see your your reaction i'll make sure to do that a hundred percent but yeah we, we can get into the main topic of episode <laughs> 10 of season two because playstation plus recently announced that they're adding two additional tiers to the subscription service we at game chat thought it would be paramount to review the online subscription service for the gaming industry and the various options that a gamer can choose from and we thought we could discuss their benefits, drawbacks, price points, features, and perks, and uh, just kind of rate them, you know, see see what we like, what we don't, and maybe just offer some recommendations to someone who has a very limited budget and can only afford one option and what we think that option should be. And these are, of course, PlayStation, Game Pass, and Nintendo Online. All three subscription services are similar in a lot of ways but they also of course all are targeted at different i'd say you know targeted at different markets targeted at different feelings and like library construction that they want you to play uh so it's worth kind of going over if someone say like was just getting into a console for the first time and just wanted to like make a decision on which one might be the best for the average gamer if you will so uh we're basically going to go through this and um try to give them a score like one through five at the end about which one we each think is the best and we're basically gonna be breaking it down by you know the different monthly and annual price points and the different like tiers that are available and for what prices they have a bunch of different uh extra perks and services that each provide and uh, of course, the game library that each provides. And then, you know, we'll try to sum, sum it up at the end, uh, break it down and decide which one we think is the most worth, if you will. So basically, uh, PlayStation 
uh, has recently decided to essentially upgrade their PlayStation Plus uh, service that they have had for quite a long time. They also have had a streaming uh, games library service out there called PlayStation Now, which in my opinion has been terribly, terribly marketed uh, for the longest time because I feel like nobody really knows about it, but they basically are combining it now into Game Pass, uh, not Game Pass, into PlayStation Plus uh, to make it all one service. And now they're going to be essentially offering three different tiers of PlayStation Plus that the gamers can choose from. Breaking it down, they have PlayStation Plus Essential, Extra, and Premium. Uh, Essential is basically, you know, what the current thing is. It's, you know, two monthly downloadable games that they usually three that they have uh, discounts, um, cloud storage for saved games, and of course, uh, access to online multiplayer. You need to have the service if you want to play uh, with your friends in any capacity. And uh, it's been that way for quite a while. The second new tier is PlayStation Plus Extra, which basically is everything you got before plus it essentially is taking all the ps4 and ps5 games that are included in playstation now and just merging it into um playstation plus and a lot of the playstation 5 games are some of the newer games that have come out such as like miles morales and and some other new options which you know give or take uh i feel like a lot of the ones they mentioned are especially if you're a ps5 owner a lot of them might be ones that people already have access to uh but you know we'll see they haven't released said games um but then you can also go into the premium tier which basically also adds all the extra older retro games that playstation now uh provides and you can download uh original playstation playstation 2 and psp games onto your playstation 5 and you can also access a large library of ps3 games via cloud streaming that is uh basically what they have of course i have the essential one now i feel like all of us do as we definitely play online with each other before um lucas which one do you think you're gonna end up you think you're gonna upgrade when this comes out it's it's said to come out around june i'm gonna personally wait to see what some of the games in said library are gonna be but what do you think as of now i'm not planning to to make any non-essential upgrades I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess we'll see what is in said library, but I've always kind of been uh, interested in just a couple games a year, and then I'll just snag those rather than like swap through like dozens of games at any time. So uh, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, if, if there's a bunch of crazy stuff on there, I guess I, I could be, I could be tempted. The, the level of self-control you have is impressive. You know what it is? There's everything's just a fr- freaking subscription service now. It's like you gotta watch, you gotta, you know, you gotta watch yourself. I mean, you're already paying a subscription service for it anyway. That's how they get you. They're like, oh, it's only five additional dollars a month, but that's times twelve, my friend. And then oh, years and years of those. That's you know. And then you forget that you're subscribed. Yeah, and it just hits you out of nowhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's happened before, and and you know. Price points for these are definitely important to consider. Uh, the essential tier is basically what it already is. You know, ten bucks a month. Uh, you can also pay twenty four uh, twenty four ninety nine quarterly, so four times a year, or just sixty bucks for a year. The extra tier basically just bumps it. You pay five dollars more a month, or fifteen ninety nine monthly versus the 10 uh it's 40 dollars quarterly and a hundred bucks for a year 
uh, for the extra tier. So it's a bump of $40 pretty much. And then the premium one, which gets you all the old PlayStation games is uh, 124 a year, 18 bucks a month and $50 quarterly. So that one's definitely a it's tad doubled. expensive. Yeah, it's 100% doubled, which I don't know. I, I got to see what the library is of those older games. I don't know if uh, nostalgia for PlayStation could like snag me that hard i kind of dove in at ps3 and the uh i had a ps2 i actually we had we've had all the playstations what am i talking about? also psp yeah i mean i i played it a lot i played your did, psp think, but... as well though yeah. i played some loco roco roco loco pat upon loco roco Lo- yeah 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 pat upon uh was pretty sick final fantasy dissidia and crisis core also yeah. both dope um there could be some some pocket pick psp games that they toss in there that would uh i feel like make it more convincing i feel like the psp games would be what nab me maybe the original playstation games too like if they got like jumping flash i do remember they dropped a like a PlayStation mini, which was the OG one a while back. I bet it's just like all the stuff that's on there. Yeah. uh, Like I I feel like they've anything that's like Sony owned, especially a lot of those old games on PS one, they could just easily toss them on for sure. For sure. I don't really know like how the backwards compatibility works. Cause like, I know PlayStation now had PS two games you could download, but like, I feel like, they don't have PS1 games right now or PSP games. On PlayStation now, they do not know. They're adding those. They do have Which is a PS- cool value add. They do have PS2, PS3, PS4, and maybe PS5 games. Uh currently on PlayStation Now. Uh no, they don't have any PS5 games. Yeah, PS2, PS3. And the PS2 library is like the PS3 and 4 are like 400 plus. PS2 is 21 yeah let's see what do we got both destroy all humans harvest moon they got ape escape 2 do they get the oat well that's ape escape 2 is good but i can i also you can you can just get that as well i mean i guess that's a value add star wars bounty hunter is on there where you play as Django fett i think i don't know some people like dark cloud I don't really get what that game is, though. That's an RPG, right? <laughs> I think so. I think you like build a town too. Okay. Yeah. Like Sim City. Yeah. These PS2 games are uh, not spectacular by any means. Let's see. What do they got for PS3? Some, a bunch of Japanese weeby games, of course. Yo, they got Star Wall. I know Lucas like Star loves Wall. Star Wars. That was a good time back in uh, 2019. Regale us with that your was. tales of Star Wall, Lucas. It's just uh, you know, it's it's just a competitive game. You versus an opponent, and you just got to stab them in the heart a couple times with your narwhal horn, and it's like just let the superior finned friend win. Do you know where the first time we played Star Wall was? It's PAX East, baby, where all oh, I, three I of wasn't us there at Game Chat with Tom and Lucas will be going. What, what do so, you you said where we first, first played it? I was not no, where present. we first played it. I don't know who you yeah, the audio to, listeners you say that? don't either. Okay, well, where Trevor and I first played Star Wars. And Wall. and the way you pointed to me, you're you're in the top like bottom left corner, so you're not pointing at anyone. I mean, I always forget like which position I'm in, like post the edit. Bill has told me a hundred times, and I've like watched it before, but I like always forget. <laughs> but your your point was that we will all be at PAX. I know that's what you were you were leading into. Yeah, unlike PlayStation or Microsoft or Nintendo, who will not be at PAX. Oh, wow. It's it's going to be a low-key, nitty-gritty tournament uh, indie game PAX. Sounds we're fun. Gonna, we're going to talk to Mad 
game developers. We're going to try to set up interviews for the podcast. I feel like we're going to also like try to record a live podcast, which I think will be cool. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a good time. We're going to do a meetup and I know you're going to be there. I will be there. Everybody will be able to see us in our, uh, wonderful game chat with Tom and Lucas, uh, t-shirts, which will have big ass QR code on them. (laughs) So people can scan to our link tree and our Instagram to check out our stuff. Now back to the program, Lucas, tell us about Xbox game pass. Xbox game pass has been out for a couple of years now, launched in 2019. And so what it is, is you can either choose the console version, the PC version, or the ultimate version. And the ultimate version would give you access to all of the games that are on the console and PC lists, which is quite, uh, quite the collection there. And it also comes included with Xbox Live Gold Membership which you need to play any online sessions if you have a Xbox console. So it's important to note that with Xbox Game Pass, it's 10 bucks a month for just Game Pass and the ultimate is 15. They don't have an annual option to pay for it. And only the ultimate option comes with Xbox Live as well. Otherwise, you're just doing the Game Pass, which if you have a PC... You don't need live. You can just get the Game Pass. But if you're on an Xbox, you still need to buy live aside from Game Pass. You know, if if you're trying to do that, which I mean, at that point, you're kind of forced into buying the ultimate if you're playing on an Xbox, which, again, ladies and gentlemen, is a pure reason why you should just get a PC and not buy an Xbox. Ain't that right, Trev? Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, but PCs are expensive right now, so that is uh, that is might very be better true. Off buying an Xbox, you can get a bunch of good games with the Game Pass on PC, uh, let alone the console as well. It is important to note that they have different games on each one, but some of the PC ones that they got on Game Pass, of course, you get Minecraft. You know, it's, of course, uh, you get that new game that I believe I've mentioned on the podcast called Tunic, which basically kind of looks like a cute little mini Elden Ring, like top-down Elden Ring, low-key. You get Guardians of the Galaxy. I know you get the dreaded Avengers game, which just recently went through a bug that the only workaround was to delete your save. (laughs) Wait, (laughs) what? (laughs) Yeah! They briefly like just had a bug (laughs) where the game would constantly crash and they'd be like, like at a certain point and they'd be like, okay, you got to go in, clear your campaign progress, play the campaign up to this point and then force shut off the game. Then it'll work. It'll stop the crashing. (laughs) Bizarre. What a fix. Yeah. For them. Crystal Dynamics, was it? Or Eidos Montreal? Crystal Dynamics. Eidos Montreal did the Guardians game. Oh, okay. Which I hear is great. Yeah, I've heard so too. I've I've like, I really got to play it because I do have it on Game Pass. As I know, we all subscribe to the Game Pass as well as the PlayStation Plus. Yeah, Xbox Game Pass, I'm not going to lie. It's it's stellar deals, but I think like I'm on Lucas's side in that the non-essential payments for games that i don't actually play like i haven't once played something from xbox game pass so i feel like i either need to start playing something or or just you have pause my played halo bit. well halo... halo's free without game pass though right that's true yes yeah. technically we've played the master chief collection which we get through game pass and i fi- i guess minecraft too facts i had already bought minecraft but that's fair there are plenty of games that i want to play on game pass for sure though like lucas we gotta play a, another cool thing about game pass is you get ea play with it as well so you get a bunch of cool games like jedi fallen order battlefront 2 all the battlefield games and uh also a way out which i know lucas has been wanting to play where you do a prison break i believe 
Yeah, we each play as an inmate and we have to, uh, you know, find a way out of our predicament. So maybe we'll get around to that someday. But, you know, just like on Game Pass, how there's a ton of games that we'll probably never get around to. I feel like the same deal is with uh, Nintendo Switch Online. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Trev? For Nintendo Switch Online, you need it to play online, um, which, to be honest, not a huge sell. There are like two (laughs) games that are decent playing online on the Nintendo Switch. Um, I'm thinking like Smash and maybe Animal Crossing. Oh, Tetris 99. Mario Kart. You get Tetris 99 and the ability to play the game, and that game is worth it. I take it back. You should buy Nintendo Switch Online purely for Tetris 99. I feel like Mario Kart and the new Mario Party are also worth it. That's fair. I don't, you're the only person I know that has the new Mario Party though. So, no, bro. Me, Max, Henry. Oh, okay. Uh, Tim, like David, a bunch of us have it. We've fair played, enough. we've played a bunch of times. Okay. I guess I'm the only one who doesn't. Yeah. You got to get Mario Party scrub. You got to get dice rolled on, baby. Yeah. I like the other Switch one. Yeah. Didn't they get rid of like the custom dice blocks in the new one? They did, yes. but the new one is like so much better. It's just classic Mario Party and it's like That's so sad, much better. Though. I thought the dice blocks, the custom dice blocks were super cool. I agree that that was the one thing I was very disappointed about, though, in that game, because I also thought the custom dice blocks were a great idea. Yeah. I think they just thought allies were too overpowered because the boards, well, some of the boards are bigger. I don't know. There's also way more boards and they're all be- like every single one of them is better than all of the ones in Super Mario Party. The fucking yeah. the fucking gold one in Super Mario Party is just like unplayable. That one sucks. So that there's only like three viable maps in that game. They which, did that game dirty. They did that game so dirty. And then they just didn't support it. And then randomly they added multiplayer, like or online multiplayer. They did right? like like three years after it came out. They did. They like, made they okay. made like a ghost update. So I guess you could use Nintendo Switch Online to play online Super Mario Party. Also, so in addition to like the the whole uh, online capability, you get access to... Okay, so here's where my knowledge splits a little. I'm pretty sure there's one tier of it where you get access to certain virtual console games, right? Like NES, SNES, I think that's it. No, there's Game Boy games maybe. No Game um, Boy games. Oh, that would be lit. Are though. you sure? Positive. Okay. It's um, it's it's NES and SNES for sure. Okay. Um. So yeah, there's there's those, and then there's another tier. You get access to N64 games in the Virtual Console Online, and then I think you get some other pros like a an Animal Crossing DLC for free. So um, along with the N64 games, you also get uh, Sega Genesis games, a big oh, collection okay. of those as well, which I thought was kind of out of left field for that. But, you know, still cool. And you do get the Animal Crossing DLC. And recently they added the Mario Kart DLC to that. Oh, that and the Mario Kart DLC is a fat deal. Mm-hmm. However, the price is like drastic different for it and from what i've heard that i've heard there have been fixes to it but i've heard that the n64 emulator that they use is just like not great not great for it they do have a good selection of games for the n64 though including but not limited to of course mario 64 they recently added banjo and kazooie paper mario which the og paper mario is one of the greatest games out there. Like you cannot diss on the OG Paper Mario game. GameCube slaps. one is really good too. The GameCube one is really good, but I never finished it. And you get both Orcarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And they don't have Banjo Tooie, which I feel like is an is an issue. And they are also missing one of the best games on. Um, place uh both playstation one and nintendo 64 which is rayman 2 the great escape um game is gas 
game is gas as fuck. It's also on the 3DS, I think. But not it is on the 3DS for the Switch. I found it at PAX one year and I thought it was like so wild because I didn't even know it existed. And I and like somebody was charging like 80 bucks for it. And I was like, wow. And I was they like, must not have printed a whole lot of them. No. And I was like, do I just get this right now? But I ended up not doing it. But that game is amazing. Uh, it was a green cartridge in the N64, if I remember correctly, which made it even more special. Um, but yeah, you get the, that and the price difference. So they they have different like availability of the tiers for Nintendo Switch. They have like individual and family plans. So for indi- we'll go for individual, um, but monthly it's four dollars a month. It's eight bucks for three months, and it's only twenty dollars for a whole year, which is like drastically a... different than the other two options. Right, it's a slapper of a deal, if you ask me. Uh, twenty dollars for a year, or you can do the family plan, which you can put up to eight people in it. Which I believe, Trevor, you're in the family plan. I believe I am in the family plan. Correct, correct. Um, and that's only 35 bucks a month. Uh, I mean, a year, excuse me. So you can do that. And uh, it's pretty cool because it comes out to like, what is that like three, four bucks a person? Yeah, it's super cheap. Crazy cheap. But you don't get the N64 games. And it's drastically different with the expansion where it then becomes $80 for a year so it jumps like to 10 bucks a person max yeah, I'm, i mean minimum which is wild uh the individual is 50 dollars a month and uh i still have not copped the expansion i feel like it might be worth it now that it has the mario kart dlc because I, I eventually am just going to get that which is another crazy deal uh from nintendo but I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Lucas? You ever gonna if you got a switch, would you opt well, for this I expansion? Would, I would, I'd have what to do you get think? the online. Well, what do you so, think? Would you would you go just for the super retro SNES and uh Nintendo Entertainment System games, or would you cop N64? And and Genesis. You play you play Golden Axe, bro? You play Golden what? Axe? Golden Axe? Yeah, bro. Golden Axe is amazing. You play as a little fucking elf knight. You chop like fantasy creatures. It's awesome. We'll 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 throw some B-roll in there. All right. Uh yeah, I have no like ties or familiarity with the uh like old Nintendo stuff. So I don't know if I'd be I don't know. Pro- probably not. But how much wait, how much more is is it for the expansion? Uh, if you're doing it individually, it goes from 20 bucks to 50 bucks. Oh, that is okay. Yeah, that's that's yeah, pro- probably not. That's that's double the price. Yeah, more more than double. More than double. Yeah, that's like. Oh no 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 yeah, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. That was that's like the wild. one thing they had going for them compared to the other options. Then that just jacks it right up with the other ones. Oh yeah, for sure. It definitely, it definitely is thick, like a big price increase. Makes you question if it's worth it. Makes you question if, you know, all of these subscription services are worth it, you know? Makes you think about oh, which of one. Of course not. Makes None you think of these about... are worth it, but we have to because the man is forcing our... us to use our own property in an online setting, Tom. <laughs> Ridiculous. Freaking capitalism, man. Gaming companies used to not do that. You could just play online if you had the console and the game. And then they're like, what if we uh, just charge them a little fee there? Just a little fee. Xbox has always done that. PlayStation didn't do that for a while. I know, but now they're no better than Xbox. It should be illegal for Comcast to charge us for internet. internet I agree. Should be a, public, uh, a public utility. I agree. It's necessary in this world. Shout out internet. That's how we make this podcast happen. That's how we do the things. 
you ever think about how like everything is just like literally everything is just run by email no i don't think about it i have not have not thought about that at all think about that and while you're at it think about which one you think you would get if you were a brand new gamer trevor which one which like let's let's do a little compare and contrast which one you like in which i mean like assuming which ones what are we assuming here well which ones do you have do you have do you have all of them i have like all me? of them in varying degrees i mean i guess the I so i have playstation have plus i have xbox game pass but not the one with xbox live because i don't have an xbox sure. and i also have the nintendo switch online family plan but not the expansion plan because thomas wanted to raise it and everyone voted no i did vote <laughs> for it at first yes <laughs> everyone Uh, voted no pretty much but in terms of like if i only had to pick one i'm not gonna lie i think probably xbox games pass even though like sony's had some fire stuff over the years with playstation plus but you didn't really be able to access that as a new gamer so you're just sort of starting out with whatever they give you and then maybe the playstation collection if you have a ps5 Whereas Game Pass gives you some fire from the get-go. Well, that's the thing, though. Now, if you get the uh, extra tier, you also get a... You basically get everything you've missed. You get, like, an extra 400. But the one one caveat to the, the whole extra PlayStation service is, like, they've already come out from the get-go and said like oh the the first party like sony exclusive games are not going to be on this service and they came out with the weirdest like reasoning for it and they're like we don't want the quality of the games to decline because we essentially don't pull in enough money and that kind of looks like some clown shit next to microsoft who are releasing practically everything that they're putting out on Game Pass day one. And then all the other companies that they're acquiring, like Bethesda and uh, Activision there, they're throwing them on Game Pass day one, so. I like, I like have to find this quote. Uh... I did see that, <laughs> that the one that Trev's talking about. Did, did you guys all see this quote and like also think it made absolutely no fucking sense? yes i i think it made sense in terms like put yourself in the position of that dude that needs to answer like why they're not bringing the the really good games there you have to make up some random shit like they should have prepped something for that because like yeah that was not a good especially because stuff that's on game pass they've done like studies like uh that they've actually sold well on on other like oh they get buzz whatnot Yeah. yeah Jim Jim Ryan says, and bear with me, folks, because this quote makes no sense. And like and subscribe if you agree. Uh, <laughs> the level of investment that we need to make in our studios would not be possible. We think the knock-on effect on the quality of the games that we make would not be something that gamers want. Like, does that make any sense to any of you? Like, you have I have to talk to some gamers. Then it sounds like. And then they can let them know that they want it. I get like, I mean, why wouldn't they put their first party games? Xbox is doing it. Like, I get it. Like, cause at that point, like that's their selling point. They don't really like, they're not do- going the Xbox route, which is just like, Oh, Hey, like we're just making our whole shit, like a subscription service. You can get it. Uh, like you, you don't even have to have an Xbox. You can do it all on your phone. Like literally uh if you you can just get access to a ton of xbox games just from your phone if you get uh game pass and stuff um because you get x cloud um but it's it's very different with playstation where all they have left to like hype up and sell is their like big first party launch stuff which admittedly is all dope as hell for the most part it sounds like you're what you're saying is Game Pass is is the better option between the two. I feel it like it all like ultimately I'd agree. I'd say Game Pass is an insane deal. Lucas, As you I. you have you have everything except the Switch thing. Would you would you get like like do you think the Switch game is the Switch thing is worth it? Do you think you'd be playing online much or do you think you'd just be 
playing the switch for what it has like pretty much party games and like you know they got a first a cup a good couple uh single player games you know pokemon zelda mario kirby that new kirby game is apparently stellar would you would you go with the online if you didn't really have to uh if i didn't have to no but i would have to you think i don't if i got a switch i would not be getting it for like a bunch of single player titles i'd be getting them for like the smashes and the mario karts and just playing playing online with the boys all the partay games yeah that makes sure. sense so it would be a necessity big facts big facts trevor which do you think you're gonna go up on your playstation uh account in the near uh, future i don't know i like probably not because of the whole like i I, I'm sort of sitting with Lucas in that I know what games I want to play. And I know that like I started persona five granted that one's fat, but like I started that in January, it's now the end of March. I want to play horizon forbidden West and finish death loop and play Pokemon Arceus. Yeah. And I feel like even just like thinking there like that'll definitely take me like a decent bit and then all the fortnite that we're gonna play like so much fortnite bro <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know if i need uh final fantasy crisis core psp emulated on my ps5 it all really depends about uh what the games library is for me at the end of the day but i feel you that backlog is thick but i've been trying to diversify but ultimately the lands between keep sucking me in but i don't know i feel like the i feel like the uh what's the second one the extra uh um, yeah that's not it's- that's not the worst deal i feel it is definitely expensive 100 bucks a year is a bit expensive but you know in a world where subscription services dominate, you just got to pick and choose which ones you like at this point. You know what I'm saying? We're just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or don't so do any of Screw it all. And then you become a live uh, off the grid, a seafarer. <laughs> 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 Playing PlayStation <laughs> on the open blue. You just like bring generator and a ton of gas on your vessel. Nah, nah, nah. You just, you have an eye patch and uh, you, yeah. And a parrot. You're a pirate. And you're playing video games while on the ship. No, you, dude, you are the. Video you're a video game, game pirate. You yeah. are Assassin's Creed Black Flag. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It all depends on the games library. I feel. I feel like the Nintendo one, like their entire library, like rides off of nostalgia, because like ultimately, like if you don't really care about like. NES games like super super old games like it's not really for you i mean i guess you have to for sure if you want to play mario kart or smash online or mario party with your friends which folks again mario party killer game it's a lot of fun but you know at the end of the day i'd probably like let i probably have to decide which ones i would like to pick ultimately if you had to, if you had to put a number to it, Lucas, where would you, where would you throw, where would you throw some of these? Let's, let's, let's go down the line. Let's start there. What do you think? Start up with Game Pass, as we've discussed, might be the most worth of them. But where, what would you put it out of five? Uh, I think it's getting a five. Oh, a full Just five. A full five. Well, compared to the other two, it's it's clearly the best option. So I think you got to give it that that top score. Definitely for the for the value of the deals, for sure. Like for the amount of content there is, for the price that there is, it definitely like holds up. Plus, you get the EA Play, which is like a neat little add-on addition, which is a whole nother library of games, which is pretty cool. What about the other two? Other two, I think, uh, I think, I think Nintendo might be at the bottom. Yeah. So I guess I guess that would be a three and PlayStation's a four. Nintendo's so cheap though, bro. It is, but that expansion pack uh it's you cheaper know, than Game really Pass. shoots you up. Yeah, but Game Pass is, you know, you're getting the most bang for your buck there. It depends though. It's it like the price of Game Pass for like per month, if you got an Xbox is is 
expensive compared to the Nintendo Switch. That is true. You know, I I just have no uh, like nostalgia for old Nintendo. So, I guess that if you sense. do, if you've been if you've been like big into their stuff for for a while, you know, you could be swayed that way more easily. But I just don't have those uh, those ties. I feel like Nintendo's like Disney. I would not compare them to the Evil Empire, and I feel like they'd be offended if they heard you say that. No, in terms of nostalgia and like lovable like memories of of your and disney kids and disney kids families. playing mario <laughs> yeah disney kids and mario big crossover although although nintendo skewed disney and cast them away when they just got decided to go uh to universal for mario land so this is facts this is absolute facts nintendo said nope no way mr mouse uh, which you know, we can all applaud. Trevor, score them. What would you give? I would give Game Pass a five out of five. Um, I would give PlayStation Plus a I don't know. I don't want to say four out of five because I don't know what those extra like games are. I, I have no idea of knowing whether it's worth or kind of just like... Eh. There will be at least uh, some newer PlayStation 5 games. I saw Returnal was going to be added there, which right there, I want to buy and play Returnal. Returnal um, looks awesome. Yeah, Returnal looks absolutely sick. And Housemark games have always put out absolute bangers. Death um, Stranding, God of War both spider-man games mk11 i think i have like all of those games with the collection though yeah that is the thing with and correct me if i'm wrong i think if you just buy a ps5 you get this i don't know if you have to have ps plus you but don't. i'm pretty sure you get all of those games except return oh actually you don't get death stranding yeah, Death Stranding is not on there. Returnal you don't get isn't. Death Stranding either. They're all the PS4 Spider-Man games. games or Returnal. Yeah, you get God of War and Mortal Kombat. God of um, War is a must-have, though. A- any listeners of Game Chat with Tom and Lucas, make sure to add uh, and download Persona Five to your library because it's actually being removed from the PlayStation Collection. Why? Um, I think come May. Because what? contracts don't last forever and neither will the PlayStation collection. So download all of those games or at least put them in your library before they just take them away from you. Well, if they, they take the it PSA. away, well, if they take it away, you know what they're just going to do? They're just going to throw it in the extra tier. Oh, I don't think so. I, I mean, I maybe, but like, th- I feel like the reason that they're taking it away is because some sort of contract expired. So maybe they renew the contract, but like, Yeah. Damn, that's kind of crazy. That's a Cop wild. Persona 5 before May. That game's gas, and everyone <laughs> should play it. Facts. Well, heed thy warning, Game Chat listeners. Um, and, uh, Nintendo Switch Online is a 2. It's not uh, totally trash, but it's not <laughs> worth it. And I would... they forced me into buying it for playing like Smash Bros. online. And Tetris 99, actually. Tetris 99 is the only reason it's not a one. The new thing they give is, uh, I believe, Pac-Man 99. Yeah, it's not as good. You've tried it? Yeah, and and the the other one, um, Super Mario 35, which not it. Is, is also gone. Nintendo took that away from, from everyone. You know what the most whack thing about the Switch Online is? The what? voice chat. No. didn't they fix it isn't isn't there actual voice chat on switch now no you have to download certain games have it i know yeah well certain games have voice chat but you have to download an app on your phone and use your phone yeah well fortnite you don't you can you can just talk on your switch i'm pretty sure your switch doesn't have a mic oh yes it does yeah, it does because you blow <sighs> In, no, that's the that's the PS5 w- controller demo. Oh, you're right. Damn it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'd say I'd probably I don't know. The value of the eight person uh switch thing is is pretty pretty neat. 
being the head of said family plan. Uh, but I, I don't know. I remember playing some like weird Yoshi Tetris esque game. I'm going to like try to figure out what this game is with uh, my boy Garab uh, back in it computer classrooms. <laughs> it was uh pretty sick. It, the game actually was literally just called Yoshi. The objective is to match Yoshi eggshells to hatch them and prevent the, the stacks, obviously. Oh, I've seen this game. Yeah. You could play two player. Uh, it was pretty cool. The second player was Luigi, of course. And uh, it was a lot of fun to play competitively. Kind of like Tetris 99. Uh, <laughs> in a way. But it was pretty sick. Um, so I'm going to give that a three because I have fond memories plus smash online is invaluable. It's a, a must have if you, if you like smash bros and Mario Kart, I'd say Mario Kart card online is fun. Uh, I'm gonna give that a three PlayStation. I'm also like, I don't want to be that guy, but I kind of want to slap it with like a, I, you know what? Actually, PlayStation Plus for the longest time has had some banger like monthly games that they've already had. So I'm going to give it a four for sure, because we've played quite a lot of them. One specifically that me and Lucas have enjoyed is uh, Operation Tango. Yes. Me and uh, former Game Chat guest Tim, uh, not Scalona Carboni, never Tim Scalona. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we played uh we played like the first hour of operation tango me we and lucas beat more. it me and lucas beat it hey, we want to platinum go. it um but yeah i i would say i'd give that a four and then round it out with uh probably game pass a five the value there is like unbeatable and they the fact that they debut brand new first party games like on that service you just get it for free uh is crazy especially because they keep buying up studios uh you know if you like bethesda games if you like anything activision blizzard makes it's all gonna be there day one for free which is absolutely nuts um so i'm gonna have to give that one a five ultimately so you heard it here first fellas uh and ladies and all the people of the world game chat thinks if you're a brand new gamer especially if you're going to get into being a pc gamer caught that game pass it's ultimately worth it uh, but yeah you guys got any uh closing thoughts you'd like to round it out with let's play fortnite fortnite come play fortnite with us folks uh lucas we're going to be streaming this week well yeah hopefully it goes better than than the first take what are we going to be doing? When are we going to be doing it, homie? Tell we're, the people. We're going to be trying to, round two to stream Tiny Tina, uh, <laughs> Assault on Dragon Keep. Hopefully the servers are functional this week as it will have been a full week since Wonderland's dropped. And that will be uh, that'll be this Saturday, April 2nd. Trevor, you want to get in on this? Saturday? Saturday morn. Do I have it? You might have it in the Epic Games Store. Oh. My friend Jake, I think, has it. And if people don't have it, it's currently $5. That's not bad. On um, the Epic Games Store. I'm not going to lie. Like I, I was looking at Wonderlands after the Borderlands episode. And uh, Wonderlands <laughs> looks cool. Wonderlands I, looks sick. I... Uh, I I think we should play Borderlands 3 first and I would like to finally speak my speak my piece. Um I've looked at the texts. Uh I I feel like I get a lot of shade for this um whole Borderlands thing, but schedule conflicts wise, Thomas has the most. No, dude. Oh. Not even close. Just because my times don't work with yours doesn't mean that they don't work with the other three Borderlands players. Lucas. So I don't know, bro. What do you schedule? Think? Putting the blame here I, is is un. I, I think I'm gonna have to go back into but... the into the messages because I really can't. I don't know. Trevor might have a point. I'll I'll mm-hmm. have to check. Absolutely. We'll, not. We'll, we'll keep you updated, folks. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll let you know next time. We'll plot Absolutely them all out not. on a when to meet and show that uh, Thomas's coverage <laughs> is poor. Not the when to meet. He pulls out the when to meet. That's evil. Nah, I'm just playing. But oh yeah, my God. I I uh I might be interested in the in the stream thing. I gotta figure out how I how I play it, but PC bro. Yeah, I, I don't seem to have it on Epic Games, so I guess I would need to buy it, but it seems Max. like it's pretty cheap. You definitely or you could play it on PlayStation and just hop in a voice chat. Or I don't know See, if you copped it. I, I think you can still I have cop the it. Borderlands collection, which has the DLC, but I don't think that matters because it's a standalone game now. I think it's still currently on PlayStation Plus. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely figure it out and we can uh, see what oh, happens. Oh, maybe the not. Stream. Maybe they were February. Oh, yeah, because PlayStation Plus for March was uh, Team Sonic Racing and Ghost of Sushi. Sushi Ghost. Yeah. Ah, but facts. We'll figure it out, folks. And uh just like how we'll figure it out once again, we'll also be very soon figuring out and solidifying our plans for uh PAX East 2022. Uh catch us there. Uh we're gonna be repping game chat the whole time, playing some games, talking to some developers, like copping some guests for this here podcast. Thank you for sticking around for this one. It's a long one, but uh you know, we hopefully gave you some good information to take away and hopefully can uh, pull in like some influence for newer gamers, you know, maybe add some people to the fold. But, you know, catch us there. PAX East we will be looking out for you. We'll be soon coming out with an episode where we'll be telling you all about what we're going to be doing at PAX East, all about how you can interact with us and uh, maybe even uh, come say hi. If you follow us and uh, think we're cool dudes. So anyway, Lucas, are you excited for PAX East? You get that Sunday off? No. Lucas. Oh, my God. No, if anybody uh, listening is interested in going <laughs> on Sunday, and I can sell you a ticket potentially. So it, slide into those DMs. Oh, no. That's true. We'll see, though. It's a work in progress. You got this. You just gotta keep pushing. You gotta, you gotta like do, you know, like rain dances. You gotta do a coverage <laughs> dance every night. I see what you, I see what you did there. Not very clever. All right, people. I think we're gonna wrap it at that. Follow us at Game Chat underscore Tom Lucas on Instagram. Come like and subscribe on to this video on YouTube. Come check us out. We'll be streaming again on Saturday. Uh, this will uh that will already have happened by the time this releases though so hopefully you checked out our stream hopefully you liked it uh, hopefully we actually got to play <laughs> fucking tiny tina and uh literally yeah we'll catch you next time we'll catch some dubs on fortnite fortnite